I'm in Florida, Fort Lauderdale, and this is the Leopard uh, 50 Catamaran. Brand new boat, and it has its own dock. Uh, this is the house with a pool, and this is the best place because we've been here for two weeks outfitting this new boat, and it's so cool because you can sleep here, you have a workshop, and it's so close. We had perfect weather, and I kind of like this boat more and more. So one of the things you can notice is you see these bows, they're very high and thin, like some catamaran just bulky forward. So it just seems like it's gonna cut through the waves really well. And then you see the clearance from the water to the bridge. It just seems like it's much higher than on the similar boats, which means that upwind, uh, you know, with the engine fighting against the waves should be way better. And that's what we're gonna find out tomorrow because we're crossing the Gulf Stream to Bimini Islands, Bahamas. A very cool solar panel roof. So this is three kilowatts of solar panels. I kind of like this roof. You know, this is added uh, additionally. And the cool thing is, you see now the dinghy is in the shade. It's not on the sun, and the water cannot feel it. So it's uh, very well protecting the dinghy. This is the platform, and it's not hydraulic, but there's two electric winches. So it's basically electric uh, platform. We'll see how this does. I'm still the fan of those ones. You know, they're just you know simple and effective. Uh, now coming on the boat There's a lot of extra equipment on this one and kind of like it. See when you walk It's very wide easy to walk pretty straightforward. There's like more or less no stupid stuff you would hit in So good handles uh, So we have a code zero which is a really good stuff and we have electric winch for furling So this is electric winch and if it stops working you can still open this and put the handle in and then operate it uh, manually I do like this design where you still have a net and this is huge storage inside we'll go through the boat more later and this forward area with the doors I just love it I mean it's in a shade you get the breeze you're out of the sun you can lay here I just you know like it a lot but I can notice this is a huge surface area here not really used much we have this uh, helm position here which is you know it's a very good seat it's a very comfortable seat i like it a lot visibility you know it's pretty good so when you're see like here trying to dock in the marina you can see except that part you can see more or less you know uh, all the boat but then forward there's a camera which you can see it's pretty good camera so you can see also the the left bow now these winches they're lumar single speed you operate them with here with the feet not sure I like this, uh, I'll have to get used to it. I like the Harken ones when you have the switch here. You know, one gear, two gear, you know, two speeds. Um, maybe just, maybe I'm used to it, we'll see. And then you have these steps, you have life raft. And this is all this great area for sitting. And because I'm not a fan of the sun, no, I get too much sun. This is added, so you can have a shade. And then uh, you can have some, uh, you know, we'll put some cushions here and just feels like uh, a very nice boat. Now the main sail, see, it's kind of easily accessed. So I think it's, it's gonna be okay. It's not too low, but still you can access it uh, way better than if you have a flybridge and you have to climb all the way up. Now, interesting thing, this vang, which is not vang. It's actually just, if you would mess it up and let go, you know, the boom lift, this would prevent from falling down. Like people might be, you know, sitting there or just doing a damage to the boat. So basically when you're sailing, it doesn't do much, you see, because it doesn't prevent the boom from going up. It's just, it's not a vank, it's just preventing if you forget that line uh, from going down. What I like a lot is, you see, no self-tacking. We have just a normal, good old proven method, Genoa, a rail, so we'll be able to set the sails much better. And also you can see the mast is pretty much forward. It's not like center or reverse like uh, some uh, similar catamarans would have, but it's here where it should be. And I think this boat is gonna sail uh, really well. Another good thing is, you see, we have two Yanmar engines. I love Yanmar. So we have twice 800 horsepower. Uh, now we have a Raymarine plotter. So we'll go through this later. But anyway, here is where you control your furler for Genoa. So just, you know, a button and then electrically uh, rolls it up. We'll see how that works. I've never had it before, but seems uh, seems okay Now so the dinghy well secured for the crossing we do tomorrow. We have some rods 
diving equipment, like loads of stuff on the boat. But we'll go through this uh, more uh, in the following days. I love this area. This is how it should be. A lot of space, huge table. That's where we hang out. I think one of the best I've seen. Way better than the competition catamarans coming in. We're just running the AC. This is the chiller. We changed something. I love the layout of this boat. There's cabins down there. I just love the layout. I just think it's the best, you know, in this uh, catamaran range. And I love the doors. See, you can go out here. And then this is area. See, under the roof. I just like it. And I really hope that tomorrow when we sail out, uh, this boat is going to be a good sailor, stiff, going well up the winds. And the view from the house, isn't this cool? Like, this would be, you know, dream come true. Having a house with this, with a pool, a boat docked just next to it. Except if this is here in Florida, because this is Fort Lauderdale. Now, getting to Bahamas is not so easy, because you have to cross a Gulf Stream. And everybody, I've never done it. And this Gulf Stream is supposed to make very big waves. So everybody is telling us don't go if there's any north wind component, like any. And I said, what about five knots? They said, no, like zero. So I'm using a couple of things on the phone to plan our trip. This is a windy app and we can see that then you see for tomorrow we can expect, you see northeast winds. Uh, we're here in Fort Lauderdale. We have to cross here to a B minute is Ellis down. Now pressing here, you see we have 11 knots of wind. So we're expecting around, you know, 10 to 15 knots of wind. It's going to be kind of a little bit upwind sailing. We can also check the waves. So we go for the waves. And uh, so he's saying, you know, one meter with five second period. You see, and that sounds pretty good, you know, like, and then it's calming down. So the afternoon, uh, the waves uh, should come down, so you see it's like uh, the sea is uh, calming down 0 0.9 meter with 5 uh, second uh, period. Another thing I'm looking at is this NOAA, so it gives you, you know, a weather for this area and it seems like people are using this. And you can see slowly improving marine conditions, uh, Gulf Stream hazards, none, so this is uh, very good. And then we can go to the area, so it still says small craft should actually caution, but this is only for today, tomorrow uh, it should be okay. Now this is the area where we are, we can look, so Tuesday, that's tomorrow. So they're saying north winds, northeast winds, 10 to 15 knots, 2 for 4 feet, occasionally 5, and a period of 7 seconds. So to me, this looks like a very long wave. Now the thing around here is the Gulf Stream. So this is the passageweather.com and it's basically telling you how strong uh, the Gulf Stream is going to be. So if I go on Tuesday, you can see it's pretty much, you know, one knot, one knot and a half. So not much, you see. And zooming in, you can see we have to cross here. So the Gulf Stream shouldn't be uh, very strong. Now, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but it just seems like it shouldn't be very strong. Because when you get to see north wind, the problem is that the, the the Gulf Stream hits them and then all the waves, you know, just get crazy. That's what they say. So I'm counting that uh, on this, that this Gulf Stream is very weak and it's not going to make, you know, uh, too much uh, mess to us. So whatever you read and whoever tells you, they say like no north component. Tomorrow we're having this northeast winds, 10 to 15. It's a big boat. Uh, we should be experienced. Uh, and uh, i think the main sail is going to help us just motor sailing to stabilize the boat now i have no local experience and everybody says no north wind component because it's not going to be good not comfortable but we just think that uh, we'll we should be able to do it and i'm really looking forward for tomorrow when we see uh, the real conditions down there you know just to know uh, you know how it is for real this is the code zero here we packed it because we're not really using it tomorrow and these are the super cool chairs. Now they're upside down. And this is basically, you see, same as a, you know, pedal board, but it's a chair and we kind of like it. So I think we're going to use this a lot. We do have lines because we don't want them to fly away. Uh, anyway, so nice to be here. Just look at these uh, channels. Now this area is just great. All these houses, you see, they have a, a channel 
and they have you know a dock and uh, wow very nice area to live this is the house with the pool and this is where tomorrow we're gonna go out and zigzag these channels couple bridges eventually get uh, to the ocean and what a nice uh, place it is to live here this is the big map so here we can see florida this is cuba and then all this is bahamas and this would be turks and caicos and then further down you would get to the rest of uh, the caribbean so we are now here uh, for the lauderdale florida and we want to cross across to bimini island so this is 52 nautical miles and we hope we're gonna be across in uh, 10 hours now we do have extra two hours here just in the channels in the uh, waterways you know they're inland we have five bridges to cross before we get out to the ocean and start crossing so the gulf stream always goes up we're gonna have around one one and a half knot of this current and we're gonna get these winds from northeast uh, which are not perfect but hopefully everything's gonna be okay early morning uh, we're about uh, to leave and the conditions seem uh, pretty uh, good there's not much wind so let's see where we are where we want to go so this is our boat now we have to follow these channels it's gonna take a while until we go exit oh here so then we exit and we go towards the bimini and the bimini is here so quickly checking the weather again so we can see that right now it's very calm here so this is a good sign if it's calm here i just have a feeling there's not much swell you know coming down more wind here uh, so you can see fort lauderdale and we go across to this small island and uh, so we can expect around you see 10 knots of northeast so it's a north component so the only thing that's uh, worrying us but then later for the day it should actually improve we should get like even less knots you see like it even drops to eight knots so the conditions are getting better through the day then looking to the waves it doesn't look too bad so right now they're forecasting you see around one meter northeast uh, swell six second period i mean this sounds uh, very good so checking at the noah so today we still have the same northeast winds 10 to 15 knots seas two to four occasionally five seconds six seconds period it just seems like see that's what we're gonna get actually later the week the things get even better uh, but we're gonna give it a try today so checking at the Gulf Stream so this is Monday Tuesday you can see there's only around one knot of Gulf Stream going up so it shouldn't affect you know the waves much uh, but we're just not sure how uh, you know accurate this is but anyway it's way better if it's green than if it's red going through the small channels it's dark now waiting for the first bridge so we have called them on channel 9 and uh, asked them to open it and this bridge usually opens at 6 and 6 30 and then 7 so every hour and half an hour so we're gonna wait now five minutes which means we scheduled everything fine and then because we have four more bridges and they're kind of synchronized so if we have normal speed they'll just you know keep opening so now we made it yeah, to this big channel, so we were here, now we came to the big channel and now it's going to be easy uh, to go down. And luckily you can see there's not much current, not much wind, so it's a good day to exit. Okay, bridge is up. I like these bridges. Now you can imagine all the traffic jam they do, there's so many of them and they open every 30 minutes each. And if there's a lot of boats, then people have to wait, all the traffic stops more nice villas and we're getting close to the second bridge we can see the second bridge and in three minutes we're gonna open so we already called them they confirmed so if everything goes by plan we're just gonna keep going through and then three more bridges like this second bridge cleared going for the third one the third bridge is actually named the Sunrise Bridge and we have a sunrise also here. What a coincidence. That's gonna bring us good luck. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's three catamarans here. Nice to see them. And just keep going on the main channel. 
Oh, I really like this. See how they pull the boats out? No trouble. So you can just go. You're not worrying about uh, the ropes, about nothing of its station. It's just like dry dock. Uh, the third bridge is opening already, so we didn't have to stop at all. I actually had to speed up a little bit. Apartments. And now the third bridge. Full speed. So here we are now, still going through the channel and we're gonna go here and here and you see all this, this is all houses with the docks and we're just gonna go through here This section now, it opens so you see it's wider and there is another big channel coming from starboard Still loads of nice villas but also bigger hotels, apartments Bridge number four. So now we're gonna go to the fuel station, get some diesel, and then one last bridge, and we're in the open ocean. Nine free. Nine three. So we're now filling up here a dock. It was not easy to dock. You see, there's a lot of current, a lot of water moving. Uh, but it was okay. So now I'm watching these numbers. So it's 94%. Seems like it's pretty accurate. 9.5. Uh, 9.5. Nine nine five. Nine five. So we're undocking. It's easy with this current now because it's pushing us away. You just release the lines, but oh, you can feel this current. Okay, now the we're just in time for the last bridge. Good timing. If we would be five minutes late, we would have to wait half an hour. So really good, we're on schedule. Okay, so we made it, the last bridge. This is the big port here for the big boats. Everglades port, I think it's called. And right there, open ocean. We're leaving now the safe waters. And this is the open channel. So there was another sailboat going out and that's a good sign. Uh, it's a sailboat, so it's just half of our weight. And if they decide to go, we should be just fine. Doesn't look too bad, but yeah, we have to cross this line, get a couple miles out, and then we're gonna get whatever we're gonna get. And this is how it looks, exiting to the ocean. So this is it. Not bad at all, boat preferring well. There's one sailboat sailing, the other one turned down. And then behind there's a plane going up. This is Fort Lauderdale. You can see more stuff down there. So I think we'll be good. I think we're actually gonna sail across. So far, very impressed with this boat because you see we have, like you don't see on the camera, but it's choppy, you see, we have these uh, meter waves and the boat is not slamming. I don't feel any flexing yet. Uh, it's a very comfortable ride, like I didn't expect that it's gonna be so good because if this is, uh, that's it, oh, we're gonna cross uh, very easily. So we're sailing uh, just fine, we just put the sails up, we're sailing upwind, so we have uh, set autopilot uh, on wind, 45 degrees apparent. And see, this is Bimini, and we have speed of 4.4 knots, which is, you see, it's not much. So we're just gonna use uh, one engine now a little bit because uh, see the wind it just dropped to 10 knots of real wind and we need to get across you see we need to get to Bimini during the daylight so we want to maintain at least six knots so we're just gonna use uh, one engine so why are we using this engine you see if you look carefully the boat this is the rudder angle you see where the rudder is turned so the boat is constantly being pushed by the wind up so that's why we gauge this one to counteract you know the balance of the sails pushing the boat up so that the rudder is more straight if we put only this engine we would go even more up and the rudders would have to compensate uh, so let's set this one now to 2000 rpm and then we'll see what our speed is gonna be so we're now 5.6 uh, see we're going 
against these uh, waves and there might be some currents so that's why we're, we're relatively slow but we do want to have a uh, six knots so maybe we'll just use both engines anyway uh looking good uh, there might be more waves as we get more into the gulf stream that's what everybody says but so far you see all those uh, scaring with no north component now we have a couple of big waves now but this boat is going very nicely there's no banging so far I am very happy with the performance of this boat so far uh, going you know to the waves it's not the fastest because it's a cruiser you know it's a big caravan but it has a very nice motion so far and uh, all those people telling us zero north component well we have northeast winds 15 knots everybody says you won't make it across if you ask me this is just an average nice sailing day but let's wait we still have to get to the Gulf Stream it might get uh, worse there's a big ship uh, going towards us and that's why we have this AIS system it works via the VHF antenna you see and you see the boat here <laughs> so the sails I mean if you ask me this is just a perfect day for sailing I would never think he would be standing in front there after everybody scared us of these north winds northeast winds like I was expecting the waves go at least all over here but let's wait we're not in the Gulf Stream yet Anyway, the sails, we have full sails, they're looking good. We have set to wind out to pilot and uh, Bimini Bahamas. It's out there, 50 nautical miles. So we'll be there today, daylight. Looking good. So looking from here, I mean, on the GoPro, it always looks flat, but there is that. Uh, it is, it's one meter wave. Uh, but this boat is going very nicely, very nicely because it has a very high clearance about the water fin hulls it's well balanced uh, but again it's the first day sailing so let's wait with my final decision is it good or not but so far this is just a nice uh, perfect sailing day so i'm really happy we left and let's hope it doesn't get worse out there in the gulf stream very good i like it so far i like it a lot but now I have to watch, it's a new boat, this is actually the first real sailing. So I just keep an eye on all the small parts, you know. Just look for something to get lost or lose or break, you know. Just keep an eye. And of course on that big boat ahead of us. We are now officially opening the sun deck. We kept it closed because we were expecting uh, we are going to be washed with the waves. Because we have a north component. But now, now the sun deck officially opened and in one hour we're gonna start bringing cocktails. <laughs> There's a big ship and we're gonna be just fine. We can also take a look here. So looking at the red line you can see we're gonna be just fine. So he's going close because this is the entry to the port. Uh, but uh, we're fine. Our speed is 6.7 knots. Uh, we're using single engine on 2000 rpm full sails and we just want to cross this gulf stream as quick as possible yeah. so the big ship is now it's not actually that big i mean it's way bigger than us so he's gonna pass nicely and we're still on our course doing seven knots over ground i like this window in the roof because i can see the sails it's well positioned i can see genoa I can see the main kind of and I really like these screens because this screen it's not just a soft it's like a very firm plastic or like very firm and you can just lift it up here hook it here you'll see later and because it's very firm uh, it's not gonna get to see like these soft ones eventually actually all of these are much firmer but this one is super firm if it's soft eventually you don't see well through so this is a very good the best screens I've ever seen we're now, uh, well, we should be in a Gulf Stream by now and we're doing seven knots. Uh, the wind just goes up, goes down, apparent wind speed 17. So there's probably 10 to 11 knots of true wind speed still under one engine just to maintain the speed because this, the, this, uh, the wind goes up and down. We just want to have the speed to get across. And these are the conditions. I mean, this is northeast wind around 12 knots. And if you ask me, this is a perfect sailing day. Just look at this. The boat is doing really well. It's not banging. 
it's not uh, squeaking uh, uh, we're not hitting the waves we just go through them it's a very comfortable boat so far i mean there's and i like these doors you see how it opens you have a lot of fresh air inside and then when you're in here you see how good visibility there is and if you go here to the chart table and you're sitting here like this is a really good visibility very easy to drive the boat uh, from inside well we could remove these boards and we have these screens from outside just to protect but anyway uh i mean look at this window easily you can drive the boat from the inside it's really really good and you have plenty of air and do you hear anything see like the boat is so so quiet so let's go into the forward uh cabin here let's see if there's any sounds i'll be quiet oh this is silent oh this is so silent wow i mean okay we don't have the very heavy seas uh but that's uh what we have but nothing is doing eh -eh, nothing is squeaking so this is the big cabin uh, super quiet and comfortable here nothing to complain about and now we can check the cabin where the engine is working just to see how much noise there is from the engine that's always uh, good to know it's not bad you can hear it see the sea conditions it's far from bad like these are perfect sailing conditions it's not challenging at all for this boat and uh, I mean well, let's see in here all good yeah but you see so far very happy with the boat really very happy so far as we were crossing this uh, for the first time and whenever you read everybody's scaring you about the Gulf Stream uh, it's the first time we're crossing the Gulf Stream and we were just kind of uh, anxious maybe a little bit afraid because everybody says don't go with north component you're gonna sink you're not gonna make it it's gonna be super uncomfortable like never ever go with the north component uh, and I said I asked the local sailors the people I said okay north. what about if it's just five knots now no if there's a north component no way you're not gonna make it uh, well we have like 10 to 15 knots of northeast winds now and these conditions are perfect sailing day the truth is i checked the strength of the gulf stream and it says around one knot and that's the important thing you have to look for if you have five knots of, of uh, gulf stream then it might be a different story but uh, i would say it's not about the wind it's about you have to check everything like just use a common sense think it through and uh, you can cross in uh, with the north component easily i asked so many sailors read everything we were just like afraid what's gonna happen uh, but uh, i can say that especially with this size boat uh, you can easily cross in these conditions and it's just a comfortable day you see crew is up there on the sun deck there's no spray we're just cruising nicely just an average sailing day so i'm like now 95 percent sure that we made a really good decision that we didn't wait for the east winds but we just used these winds because it gives us much better sailing so so far thumbs up happy with the boat and let's just hope we continue that way I'm a very big fan of fly bridges and I thought I'm gonna miss it on this boat but now this area you see like this place for sitting here this is so good and because we have this also we have to figure out if we can use this during the sailing it does interfere with the boom but I think it actually should work this is like a fly bridge now and you have very good view of what you're doing 
and you can just be up here so. safety wise uh, we're using uh, something new not new just a new model so in here we have this thing which uh, if I pour in the water I can either manually activate or you can set it that goes automatically when the life jacket uh, inflates and it's the PLB personal locator beacon that works via the uh, GPS you know like the satellite and also the AIS so it's two things in one machine uh, so basically what it does via the AIS if somebody falls in the water we're gonna be able to see him on our screen because we're gonna pick the signal via the VHF antenna which is on top of our mast and we're gonna be like able to locate him and it's gonna guide us so it's gonna be very easy to find that person uh, the second thing is via the satellite it's gonna send a signal uh, to the rescue to the coordination center and because we had to you know like register they will know who we are the contacts and everything and then it's very easy for the rescue the helicopter because it also has GPS so basically AIS it's for us so we can find the person in the water locally and also any other ship would be able to pick up that signal and also when let's say a coast guard or a helicopter comes they can also use that AIS signal you know for micro locating a person uh, but the signal the other thing you know the signal going to the uh, satellite and to the res uh, rescue coordination center uh, you know it's very easy to inform you don't have to call them it just goes automatically and they you know you're in trouble and you hope uh, they will pick you up so now it's all in one machine we used to have two machines separate and I kind of like it it's in here so just put your life jacket up and you should be pretty safe we are 12 miles uh, actually less 11 miles away from Bahamas Island Bimini and we see land see down there we just saw land so we're gonna make it it's right there and I can tell you this was one very comfortable sailing no problem at all could do it with a hobby cat just look at these colors so we're now entering Bimini and you can see it's all shallow there so we have to go through here and just watch the colors of the water well it does look like a paradise look at that sand but it's very shallow we're now okay now it's quite deep 2.7 meters but definitely not fun coming in here and they have a shifting sand but uh, we'll be okay it's good to have these polarized glasses you can see better and very slowly keep going I don't have too much speed so we can stop the boat quickly I will be fine here's the reef you don't want to mess it up and come in here so we came through our narrow channel some shifting sand but we're okay and now in there there's a marina where we're gonna stop and do the customs but I kind of like this shore see these houses they're super nice, very clean beaches. It's not bad at all. So here we are, docked. So we cross from Fort Lauderdale here to Bimini Island. And now we're in the Browns Marina. So it's the first marina and we're gonna do a uh, check-in to the country, customs. And it's not bad out here. See, it's pretty nice. It's gonna be sunset in one hour. Not bad at all. boat secured well so it's a kind of you tie to these uh, wooden pontoons and then uh, it's interesting because you have to put your fenders uh, sideways that's what we don't do in Mediterranean so basically you have this guy sticking out and you have to put your fender here now if you mess it up you're gonna scratch your boat all of this is kind of plastic I'm not sure if I like this system but that's just how it's here I prefer like you know like a nice uh, wall but anyway, we'll figure this out. We have plenty of ropes. Uh, the boat is uh, in good condition. This is it. Look at this beautiful water. Just beautiful. We got this, uh, we've bought it from local fishermen, some lobsters. And we're gonna test this electric grill. Good, good. It seems like this is gonna be another cooking trip. A 
beautiful morning here in the Bahamas. You see, this is a small ferry, so that guy is going. This is a small bimini and big bimini, oh no, south and north. And he just keeps going all the time, connecting the two islands. And there's airport and resort. And we're here in the marina, early morning. And it's really nice. And looking at the water, you can see how quickly the current is going. So yesterday when we were coming in, I knew that the wind is from this direction. But then coming in, I didn't realize that there's so much current from that side. So eventually we managed. Uh, but yeah, you have to be very careful about the currents. And sometimes you just don't see really well uh, where the current is coming from, but then it just pushes you. You have to be careful when uh, docking. So how did we dock here and why did we choose uh, this place? So we could choose to be on the outside or to be in here, but then here you have left and you have right side. Now the thing is, because the wind is coming a little bit from here, if we chose that part, we would be pushed against this, you see, wood. Uh, if we would go to that side, again, we would be pushed towards the pier. So that's why we choose this one, and you can see we're pulled away. So it's, of course, much better for the boat. Now, the most important uh, ropes uh, we have done. So you see this one, this rope is making sure that the boat doesn't go that way. So you see, it's a very big angle. Uh, like this one is just, I don't know, a safety one, very loose, because I didn't want to have a short line. Short lines means they don't stretch much, so if there's a big wave, uh, you know, you can pull something out. But having, a, see, a long line, especially if it's single, it's going to stretch a lot, so it's uh, much better. Now, the second most important thing is these spring lines, see, and we put them at a very, very low angle. So they go from the middle cleat, see, and they go here, and then another one going down there so they supposed to be long lines i would even prefer this one to be a little bit uh, longer but that one's perfect and they have to be at a very small angle now they're preventing the boat from going backwards and forward so that uh, you see these fenders stay where they are and now forward you see there's another line which is preventing the boat at big angle from going there now you can see this one is see it's quite long still quite short if this would be a big waves but in these conditions, it's uh, it's very good. So it's just preventing the boat from going there. So we changed, uh, we, we put this propeller, so this is the original one, and we tried this one, fancy one. You see, this one has three blades, this one has four blades, but just like it would put engine in two high revolutions, so we'll just use this one as a spare one. <laughs> so the washer goes first, and then this nut. They line, they line it up with the hole for the pin. Oh yeah, so then there's a safety pin and there's a hole so we just put it in so the nut doesn't come yeah. off, although it shouldn't. Oh, that's a good trick. Oh wow, that's a good trick. Oh, good job. And then the thing, when you're tying uh, anything to these cleats, now it's very calm day, but when you get a lot of waves and pulling, these cleats are very rough, you can see. This is not stainless, they're very rough and they're just gonna eat your rope. Just they're gonna eat it for a, a breakfast. So either put a hose around, then you just take a hose, put it around or some protection, or always put the end of the rope towards the cleat. Let's say you attached one side to that cleat and then you pull all the rope, put it here and attach it, right? And you still have a lot of rope, which basically means your middle of the rope is gonna rub here. Now, when the rope is, uh, you see, like now, if this is rubbed, I can just cut it, make it shorter a little bit. If you use the middle of your line attached here, then the only way is now to have two very short lines which are useless. So it's good to think about these guys and uh, had very, very bad experience with exactly these cleats. They just eat your line. This is the speed and depth. It goes there to the screen, to the Garmin. And this wood block is here just because we cannot put the engine all the way down and now it's just you know resting on these uh, hydraulics uh, so we just put this in here so now it's resting on this we're not torturing any mechanics of this boat but loads of extras there's underwater lights oh there's a woofer in here right look at this no yeah yeah where's the woofer and the area. oh this is the woofer yeah so there's a woofer speakers and underwater lights loads of extras you see here you can uh, adjust your woofer it's a very well equipped dinghy 
a lot of fun. And the good thing is what people don't have on the dinghy, you need your navigation lights. Here's green and red. Supply ship coming here so you can see cars and everything. So this guy, these pins, which they pin in here, you always break them, you see, and you have to pull this all the time to be able to open this and this. Kind of a bad design. We've lost so many. So it seems like if you spray them with a silicon spray, now they should just, you know, slide up and down easier. And uh, hopefully the wind is not going to take them easier now, but no, it's kind of a bad design. Boat's moving out. So now let's check and see the height of the boat. So you can see how high about the water is the middle and that's why it doesn't do much trouble. And you look at the, see how thin they are, they're not bulky forward. So I think that's the reason why this boat goes very nicely upwind. Now going for a dinghy ride, time to explore Bahamas. Ah, oh, there's this guy who's driving all the time. You see, there's passengers all the time. He's connecting south and north Bimini. So the thing on top of the mud, that's not a light on that pole sticking out. That's uh, a lightning avoidance. So this thing's supposed to make us invisible to the lightning. Let's hope it works. Now as the sun is coming up, we're getting the colors. Isn't this nice? Oh, there's this guy again, waiting for the people to take it to South Bimini. So these um, paddleboard chairs, they're actually kind of cool because you can tie them down. They have these spots and yeah, you can just take them anywhere on the boat. And they are super comfortable. That seems like a good position. Does it feel right? It feels beautiful. Yeah, it's Love great. It. And you can take it anywhere. And we can take big waves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're not going to fall over. Yeah, they're stable. Looks like fun. Yeah, let me give it a try. Yeah, these chairs, they're just super comfortable. Super comfortable. You can take them to the beach, they float. Oh, and the view is getting better and better. As the sun is getting higher, it's getting better and better. Well, we got two of these chairs because you cannot drink beer alone. <laughs> and just not fun. So you need, you need a drinking friend, a buddy. So Brown's Marina, and this is the Tiki Bar. You can hear local music. And we just made this step, you see? Because when you want to pack the sail, you want to step up there, but it's kind of high. So we, these are what we made, and now it's so easy, you see, you just step up. And now we can work on our sail, uh, which is uh, nice. See the color of the water? It's off season now. So basically there's a cruising ship, so there's a bunch of tourists running around. But otherwise, that's it. I like this deck, but there's one thing, you see, I mean, you can step here, it's strong enough, you see, like we're on the end, you don't want to jump or up, I mean, it's strong, but I'm just missing the steps to go down, because now, if I want to go down, guess what, I have to walk the whole boat to get here to these stairs, oh, and this area is just perfect, look at these solar panels, I just love this solar panel, so here's the stairs, and then I have to walk the whole distance of the boat again to just to get forward see like stairs here would be great and I mean you can jump off if you want but then going up you can jump again it's just not uh, not that easy now these chairs are actually not in a way so we can close it want to show we can close them and they stay here now they're attached and we can still turn and lock it's locked and then we can just pull it up if we need to access i think it looks good the color is good you unlock you lift it up oh and they just fit yep oh that's perfect 
That's a big, that's two big sharks. Hmm. So our boat is down there. We we're just cleaning the bottom. And there's two big sharks. This is lunchtime for them. Yeah, bull shark. Fresh fish, bull shark. They like humans? Oh, they love humans. Oh no. That's why we say no swimming. And when you all did just told me you have been the bottom clean in the bottom just now, uh, I didn't know that I was there you all come with that for. Not good. Okay. Even see the bad part. Are we cleaning fish? They're coming around. Oh they come for the fish. Oh right. when they clean again they come no, they for they comes the... around looking for food still, otherwise, but when fish cleans here yeah, they come more. They come to and they eat. Uh, so they come for the fish. Our boat down there, and that's just a fine fishing boat. A lot of horsepower. This is the marina. We are leaving Bimini, and look at these colors. It's the real Bahamian water. So we're gonna go around and then sail towards uh, Great Bahama, the island next to the Abacos. Then uh, look how much better you can see backwards, you see? So when you're going tricky stuff, always think where the sun is. The best is if the sun is all the way above you or behind you. See, now you see well behind us, but now you see a lot of reflections. Now having a polarized sunglasses helps a little bit, but you don't see much, you see? It sucks. On the big chart, it looks like this. So we came from Fort Lauderdale and we crossed across to Bimini and now we're gonna head towards the Great Bahama. This is the West End. So we have around 70 miles. This is 70 miles. And then a little bit more probably to get to nice anchorage. So we're gonna sail uh, during the night. We are full sails now. This is the end of Bimini. So let's take a look here. So this is Florida. We came across and now we go towards the West End. We have 13 knots of true in speed because we cleaned about 14. 16 apparent, apparent wind angle 052 and we're doing 5 knots now judge for yourself if that's a good speed or it's not a good speed definitely not a racing boat but definitely is a comfortable boat here's our sails they're kind of trimmed okay like more or less 95% uh, there's not much waves there's a little bit and no current so doing this uh, 5 knots and testing our new chair is it good? Very good. Very excellent. Yeah, these chairs are kind of smart thing. So down there, Bimini, there's a big cruising ship. They brought a bunch of tourists, but otherwise nobody's here. It's not season yet. They say everybody comes for the holidays, end of December, uh, which is good for us. The marina in the, we paid, I think, $60 for this catamaran, which is super cheap because they want us to come back. Super nice people there. Thumbs up for the Browns Marina, uh, very nice people, there's new owner, uh, very welcoming, uh, just uh, I can only recommend. So now we have, let's see how far this is like, 56 miles, 56 miles left, so around 60 miles to the entrance. And then we want to be here daylight because we have to go through these passages. And then it's all shallow, you see this is 4, 3 meters. So the whole big area is actually a super shallow and that's why we came here. Eventually we'll get here to Abacos, you see. This is a reef and we're gonna sail these shallow waters. Beautiful. And you can see there's lots of flying fish. Hard to see them on the camera. Well, these chairs are pretty cool. They're comfortable, they fit here, they don't move even in these waves. 
I think the only thing missing is a beer. But as I've said, this is a beer free or is it free beer boat? I don't know, makes a big difference. Beer free or free beer? So the only reason we're sitting here is because we have way too much stuff behind. Too much food and cookies and all kinds of stuff. So we need more weight forward. And more weight forward is gonna keep the bows down when setting up wind, so that's why we sit here. We are probably one of the top 10 heaviest things on this boat. So that's why we were just put here to sit, do nothing. It's sailing. We have a fishing rod and we got these squids and they are like super interesting because they have these wings and you can adjust to see how these wings go and they should pull the bait under the water so it's not jumping on the waves it's just for different kinds of fish and yeah we'll see how this works so let's uh, let's put it in so the squid is out there now you can see it's pulling nicely and it's definitely under the water now I'm not sure if you can see the line on the camera but if you look carefully the line goes like this it doesn't go backwards the line goes like this it's because we're sailing upwind and these catamarans they just go sideways because they don't have the real kill so they just go sideways and then that's how you can see that you see it's pulling so much up this is the how much sideways we're going well let's hope to catch a dinner i just start fishing and everybody's eating cookies because they don't believe in me see i start fishing and everybody starts eating because I'm fishing, I'm gonna catch fish, food. They don't trust in my capabilities. I'm gonna show them. So now I'm fishing. And this is how fishing looks like. You sit here and you watch. I have my fishing gear. See, this is the fishing mask. And it's so that the fish doesn't recognize you. So they don't, they don't see a fisherman and then they, uh, then they would, uh, you know, bite quicker. It's great. This is the sun mask, so when you get reflection and get all burned, uh, it's really good. Because it has, uh, you see, you can breathe. It has this here. So easy to breathe and you can keep this up all day. And it uh, protects you. See, also here you put it into the uh, your shirt. And just protects your neck and it's a really good stuff. Really good. The only thing is that you cannot eat cookies and fish at the same time. That's the only thing. But... Uh, We'll figure it out. Well, still nothing on the hook. I'm just thinking maybe I should put these cookies on the hook. Because why would fish, you know, eat a rubber squid? Like, who likes to eat rubber squid? This is way better. I'll put this on the hook. And now for the geeks, uh, let's look at the numbers and what's going on. So we have a full Genoa, full main. Uh, they seem to be like, they're pretty well set, like 95% set as well as I could do now let's look at the numbers so we have right now 11 knots of true wind speed and we're doing 4.5 speed over uh, speed over ground now through water it's similar so let's just say there's not much current involved uh, so average uh, apparent wind speed 15 apparent wind angle 40 it goes from 40 to 45 and let's just look do you find this fast? Do you find this slow? I mean, there's like 12 knots of true wind speed, 14 apparent, 15 apparent, that's that's some wind. Well, we are going kind of upwind, so we have 14 apparent wind angle. Speed 4.2. I just would say it's a very comfortable ride, uh, but definitely not racing, but it's very comfortable. And the boat has a very good uh, motion it's very pleasant it's kind of it feels stiff it goes very nice for these waves and because it is clearance about the water it's a very comfortable boat and very silent this is probably the most silent boat i sailed so far so far the fundam peugeot saona 47 was very stiff and silent but maybe this one is even more silent 20 minutes later the wind increased to 13.5 so just two knots more and look at the speed we just need like a small push no actually the angle changed also you see the apparent wind angle yeah that's the difference you see the wind didn't went much up but the angle changed and we are now one knot faster so we caught something 
Let's reel it in. Okay. Today, we go vegetarian. So we just caught a salad. So today we're having salad for dinner. Why not? It's food. Okay, so let's put him back in. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, release the brake. Okay, and let him out. Brake is turning. Yeah, now we need to catch a uh, main dish. A fish would be good. Fish would be just fine. And then maybe a dessert. Chocolate. Sitting in here, we're sailing now so comfortable it's so bright you see because of this window and looking forward like i can see so well you know i really like feel i'm uh, like almost like outside and not many boats have this like this i think this is the best boat regarding this this layout is just amazing it's bright you can see out you see when i look backwards i can see very well what's going on there looking forward for these big windows i just feel like i'm here and like easily i can sit here and watch forward and I can actually see loads of stuff. Like really thumbs up. I love this design, these doors. Uh, I think this is the best layout so far uh, on the catamaran that I've seen, really. Thumbs up, good job, Leopard, good job. We just got some speed. We have 50 knots of true wind, 18 apparent, and we are going 7.2. So the boat just started sailing. Uh, we have apparent wind angle 60. So this is the sweet spot for these boats and this is how it should be. So you're doing seven knots. And we are doing pretty well. So we left Bimini Islands and we have done uh, around 20 miles. We have 40 miles left to West End and we're gonna be there 11. So what we decided, because it's gonna be dark, we're actually faster than we thought. We're just gonna drop an anchor here. You see, because the winds are going down and there's no other swell or winds or whatever, see, we only have the waves coming from this direction, the wind waves, there's no other swell. This area should be protected because the winds go from east. So we're just going to come here at night and just drop the anchor on 5-6 meters and go to bed. Then in the morning, we'll go through the passage. So there is an anchorage, you see, anchor sign. It just means like this is more protected, right? It's more in. But again, we don't want to squeeze in here because, uh, see, at night, you don't want to squeeze in here. So we'll just stay out here. We have turned our lights on so the other people can see us otherwise it's gonna be a night sail down there a small island with a lighthouse and we're doing just fine oh there's a couple of big ships you see one two three big cargo ships now it seems like we're just gonna have a salad that's fine we like healthy eating because if we didn't catch anything by now we won't catch anything because the fish goes to sleep sunset and sunrise that's when you catch a fish so we're gonna reel it in and get ready for the night the wind is picking up even more we're now on seven seven knots we have apparent wind speed 20 17 and the leopard says once you hit 21 you should reef but if we reef because this is a huge reef well then we will be back to six knots and that would kind of suck so we're just gonna hope the wind doesn't increase too much and we can still depower the sails a little bit so like they say 21 right but let's say it goes 23 24 you can still depower if you're experienced let's say you can open the sail more you can release the main sheet and then the top of the sail is gonna open more or you know maybe just furl a little bit of genoa uh, so there's like tricks to go around but anyway if you're not sure what you're doing just stick to the plan and once you see the number 21 you reef the main by the book we are getting close to the west end and it's uh, not midnight yet so we were much faster than we thought 
So you can see this is our track, so we left Bimini hoping to be here in the morning, but we are much earlier. Because the wind didn't drop as they predicted, they said the wind is going to drop to 10 knots, 8 knots, but we are having 17 knots of wind. So you can see here, that's where we got the very strong winds, started going downwind trying to figure out what to do. Eventually we rift, so now we have uh, main rift and also Genoa rift a little bit. And anyway, then the wind started going to east, but it's still very strong. Uh, so we are way too early because we, we cannot enter at night. You cannot go through this area at night, no way. So now, we've never been here before, but I just think this area around here, see it should be a little bit sheltered uh, from the winds. Uh, we're just gonna come here, drop an anchor and wait until the sunshine comes up. It was a nice sail and I kind of liked the boat. It was a uh, very smooth ride, but still it's time to go to bed. It's been a long day. We just woke up in this great place here in the West End. So we crossed from Florida here to Bimini and then sailed yesterday all night. I mean, not all night. We came here two in the morning and now we are here and we're going to keep going like this. So the bigger picture, so this is Florida, Andros, Exumas down here. This is Abacos. So we're now fixing this seat cover, which is here. Because yesterday after that bumpy sail, this thing fell off and it seems like it's a little bit, uh, yeah, just not strong. So we're going to put some Velcro, we have already done it on this side, so it's going to cold better because these guys are just a uh, joke. So why are we using it? This is a heat gun. So how cool it is? It's a battery heat gun. And we're using it just to, there's a lot of moisture in the air and we want to dry out the surface so that the velcro is gonna hold better. Well, it's not a rocket science, but if you want to put glue on something, uh, that surface shouldn't be wet and moisture, and we are in Bahamas, and that's why we're drying it out. There was another small damage, so this cover uh, came from here, because we had a lot of waves and banging, so it just came off. So we'll have to improve this uh, also. It's not bad, it just fell out, nothing special. Uh, so it looks like this, you see when you look live, uh, there's four more boats, uh, three of them are having a yellow flag which means they came yesterday, they're gonna do customs here in the west end. It's very shallow, now we wanna go through, through this passage, see it's very shallow, 2 meters, 2.2, to get across and then here it's gonna be around 3-4 meters, so then we can sail maybe to Mangrove, okay, we'll see what we wanna do. But anyway, the funny thing is, you see you're watching this picture, and then you think you're gonna see something around. So this is the West End, this is the, there's a marina and customs. And on this side, basically, you think it's something, but it's nothing. Let's go to the top of the roof. Now this is the reality. So the passage is down there, so it's not marked, nothing. You just have to figure it out, grow, go through there and then you get to the other side. This is the entrance to the marina, so there's a small marina, customs and this is it, this is West End and then yeah, after the passage there's nothing again. The other side is just open water but uh, very shallow and kind of protected with a reef far down in the other side. Assembled again, so see this is a small part that came off now it's velcro to this part, so now it should be good. We shouldn't lose it now. But we're ready to fix anything because one of the cabin, you see, it's not a cabin, but it's, uh, you see, we have a washing machine and we have a bunch of tools. So, tools, spare parts, more tools, more tools. And then the whole toolbox, you can open, there's a key. So we just screw it in. This is like a big uh, box for all the stuff. More stuff in here. We have all kinds of tools. And then more stuff underneath here. So basically we're packed with tools. We can fix almost anything. And this uh, toolbox room has a TV, which is connected to Starlink and you have YouTube. So if you want to fix something, just google on the YouTube how to fix this and then you'll fix it, very easy. 
after a long night sailing and sleeping just for a couple hours because we want to go on I'll show you why because we want to catch a high water the best thing you can do is eggs in the morning there's nothing better than the eggs in the morning and this is the second best sound uh, the steak is the number one when you put the steak on the grill but this is the second best sound we could make a mouth here and I'll make a smiley <laughs> Two eyes. Can't go wrong with this, right? Yeah. Oh, it smells good already. Mm. So, um, this thing is now connected to our Starlink. So, we have a live tides, and you just press here. Oh, it's kind of clumsy. Oh, come on. So, that's why these things are just not, they need to get back. Okay. So, right now we have uh, 40 centimeters of tide. It's gonna go down. At lowest it's gonna be 20 and at highest it's 80. So you just want to go you know with highest possible because it's shallow already right? So this uh, so these numbers here this is the lowest mean water so like this is the lowest you should get right and then whatever we see on the tide you just add so let's just say you see here you have 2.1 meter like this is you're probably not gonna have 2.1 but okay you have shifting sand but the chart theory says this is the lowest water uh, that you should ever get and now saying that we have a tide of 0 0.38 centimeters because we are metric that means it's not going to be 2.1 meter but it should be two and a half meters it's just the theory and then when you get here because everything is shifting in Bahamas and sand is moving it might be different so that's why you always enter when you can see because you can see the water now now is the sun is low and we go against the sun see that's not the perfect because you don't see really well if the sun is low and against you uh, theoretically we should wait until the sun goes up it's above us or it would be like slowly going down still high and behind us and then you have the best uh, visibility but uh, I guess we'll be just fine here because it's very short just a couple of miles and it's quite straightforward we'll just watch our depth go slowly but otherwise yeah you do want to use polarized sunglasses and have a sun on the right space when you're going some tricky places these doors they're just like so low you see like i just crash my head all the time and i'm just thinking you see oh. this is just a cover so this could be avoided you see it's just like why did they build it this way it could be this much bigger and then i wouldn't hit so much it's just like it's a 50 footer and I have to do this I don't like it but it's fine my head's gonna get used to it so another thing I noticed and I've mentioned already you see yesterday we had really rough night it was 20 knots of wind upwind sailing and there's not much spray on this area and it really works you know when we were sailing there was not much spray uh, coming here like hardly at all you know and it just seems like that this area here just keeps everything uh, here you see like this roof and a little bit shorter net which is just perfect and you know the boat just doesn't spray all over like some other boats do you now there's some boats with very little winds you would just kind of the flow would go like this and just a small wave just spray 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 now this boat uh, really thumbs up it's a very dry bow up there and that's a good thing because you know you can sit up there in that up area and you're not gonna get wet or salty you know it's really good checking the engines you should check you know just you check how the oil is there any leaks anything strange where's the cooling is like there any water in the fuel filter is your strainer out there clean so you just very quickly you can check these things and uh, i'm gonna take much time Okay, checking the oil. That's good. We're now leaving the west end. And we're gonna go through this passage. And actually, you see, if you would just use a common sense, I mean, you can see this is not possible here. But like, I don't think you could find a passage without a chart. You see, because there's only a tiny passage possible right now. And this is here see everything else not possible super shallow there's only one tiny passage here with two meters 
we are now approaching the shallow waters, we have 6 meters of depth. And the good thing is, uh, the higher you go, the better you see. Now the sun conditions right now are not the best as I've said. So we're just gonna rely on our depth and chart. Uh, because if we had a very high sun, you could see. But right now, I mean, I can see it's super shallow there. Shallow here, but very hard to say. Uh, exactly. It is kind of uh, a better wait for the high sun. See, basically right now we don't see much. And what you want to do is, you want to go maximum 3 to 4 knots. Because if you go full speed, by the time you slow down the boat, obviously. And you should expect the currents and the wind pushing you sideways. So very carefully, slowly, observe the currents. It's not a rocket science, you can do it. Just, you know, pay attention, polarized glasses. Another good thing to do is, you watch your depth and you compare it with the depth on the chart. If it makes sense, that's good. If it doesn't make sense, you know, double check. Now, because right now we're reading 2.7, but the chart is saying more than 3 meters. We're now 2.6, although the chart says 3.2 meters. And that's at the lowest water. Uh, so it might be shifting sand, you see. We were expecting to have one meter more of the depth. But that's how it is, you know, the bottoms here change. You just have to go slowly. So now it's 2.6 meters, which means we only have a meter under the kill, you know. That's why I have to go slowly, it's only one meter. See the bottom really well now as the sun is shining. We're having 2.4 meter now. See, so this is just one meter under the kill. It's yeah, just not much. With our, uh, with our readings now, we're coming at 2.5. Uh, maybe it'll right. 2.4 there. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, 2.2. Yeah. So, okay. So now the chart is reading 2.5. So we should have one meter more. Uh, we expected way more depth because it's high high tide uh, but 2.1 uh, go to the left go left that's where the track is yeah it's saying 26 here and uh, just keep to the track yeah so we're now two meters that's uh, getting shallow 1.9 okay This is 1.8. We're now reading 1.5 meter and it says 2.3 plus the tide. So we're reading one meter less than it should be. It might be the transponder we said have to set the depth meter. But it's saying 1.4 meter. So we should be on the ground if it's 1.4 meter, which means we'll have to calibrate the depth sounder. But this, to me, this looks at least two meters. So that's why I need a good visual. Now hopefully we are over the most shallow part of all this area. It's just shallow, shallow, shallow. And if you ask me, it's so hard to see a difference. So looking up the sun, you get the reflection, not good. But then looking down with the sun, you can see uh, the water. So especially if you're looking for the reefs, or very bad charts and uncharted reefs, you must be like this, right? You have, must have visibility. There's no reefs here, so we can afford to go with a little bit worse light. Uh, but we have to tune up our depth meter just to know what really is, because we went 1.4 uh, and we should be on the ground. So I think we are reading one meter error. Uh, so make sure you know what your reading is on your boat. And just look around, you see, this is ultra shallow there. We cannot get to that island, you see. It's way too shallow to get there with our boat. Just looks like a perfect beach down there. And now we're getting in this kind of, you know, reef lagoon, which is sheltered from the big waves. It's just a huge area. And we're gonna sail in around three to four meters just up there. And you can see there's nothing around, just, oh, there's one island. So cool to go to that island, but yeah, too shallow for us. 
I always use sunscreen, I'm gonna put my head later and then I use this one, it's really good. You know, just use sunscreen, it's very strong sun. Especially when it's low. See, the low sun just burns you. And uh, really good to have these headsets because I'm walking around the boat now in case they would need me, you know, I'm gonna be there immediately and we can hear each other, we don't have to yell and we have these tricky situations, shallow. See, very quickly if I notice something I can just say and uh, it's such a big boat you see right now i wouldn't hear anybody calling me and if they really need me i wouldn't hear it you see and now i can just freely move around the boat and still communicate uh, uh, it's really good for the size of the boat and especially when we were lifting the anchor you see uh, you don't see anything from the helm position so this guy uh, has to talk to that guy up there and without the headphones you're gonna have the trouble and you can always figure it out but this is so much easier really good we're now approaching to this shallowest area see this is the narrowest part and it's you know it's gonna be like two meters on the chart which means we're gonna get to 1.2 on our depth meter and that's gonna be extremely scary we'll just go little by little we're doing uh, we're doing pretty good so we've been through this part now quite shallow and now we have to watch uh, these reefs see this is recommended way Although, why wouldn't we just go out here? Well, probably they know why. And then it's gonna get deeper, but you have to watch these coral reefs, you see? Rocks. Have to be careful on these guys. Now we're sailing towards Mangrove Cay. And we spend the night here, that's the plan. So we have uh, around 15 more miles to get here. And this Mangrove Cay, it's an island. There is an aircraft uh, wreck. We can go diving, uh, good anchorage, protected from these east winds. And we're just gonna spend the night here and research uh, the island. This is how it looks around. So down there, that's a west end. That's where we came at night, came through the channel. And this is how it looks, it's around three meters deep. Very nice color of the water. Not much waves, it's protected area. Very nice here. And you can see on the horizon, no boats, no islands, nothing. It's just a huge shallow area. Let's test this spot now. So open the door. Oh, there's a nice breeze here. Closes nicely. Well, it's all salty right now because we've been you know, going upwind yesterday. I think this is it. This is gonna be my favorite spot. You're in the shade, you have a breeze, super, super comfortable seat. You have the view, you can see everything, you're in the shade. I mean, this layout, this is the way to do it. Like, really, really, thumbs up, Leopard. Like, this area, really good. I just love the roof. I'm a fan of the sun, but you see, when you spend a lot of time on the sun, you don't want to be on the sun all the time. And here, it just feels nice, you have a breeze. This is top, this is really, really good. So the best way to clean the deck is using a pressure washer uh, because it's all salty and that's the way you use uh, the little water possible, you see? So I just connect it to the electricity and via inverter so it's easy, no need to run generator and then the hose uh, just connects here to the washdown pump. I could use this hose but you see uh, not much pressure so I would use more water and be less efficient if you bring this guy you're gonna use very little, maybe, you know, like 40-50 liters to wash the whole boat. It's really good. Lunch. That's a good sound, so this is how it should sound. That's a nice electric grill. Oh, it's very useful, actually. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, our ding is in the water. Getting ready to explore. So we made it across there into this channel, our boat is down there and this is quite deep, like suddenly it's quite deep. So we're in this mangrove, looks like a river, it goes to the middle of this island and now it's super deep. Interesting. I wonder how this is, uh, how this, uh, like how it's done, like why is it like this? Looks like a river. If you need a spare tire.
now there's two channels and the depth is three meters it's three meters here it's crazy like it just seems like somebody dredged this just makes no sense it must be natural what lives in here <laughs> good morning from bahamas we had a little bit of rain and little rain is always good because it cleans the boat it's always good to have a little bit of rain it's so calm today where's the sun so there could be a couple of showers today but it's just fine here's our mangrove okay and things just look differently see when you're there's sun you get this color but now there's not much colors but you can see the bottom see it's right here very shallow so another catamaran came during the night i guess but otherwise there is no boats around maybe one there so you can see these showers they just come and go very light and uh, yeah here's the sunrise here we are florida so we crossed here came up here spent the night here on mangrove cay and now we're going to the great sail cay so this should be a way better place uh, this mangrove cay well it was nice but not really something special so our expectations are much greater for Sail K. We have 20 nautical miles to go there. We'll be there in a couple hours. Bananas are turning in very unhappy bananas. We'll have to eat them very soon. So we'll have banana day. Still kind of rainy, but you see like you can be inside and you're protected. And it's such a good visibility from here. So if we had a chart plotter here, and if you have a remote for the autopilot, it would be so easy you see you're just sitting there in the rain and you have a great visibility fishing master is uh, choosing what we want to catch so what do we want to catch today mahi mahi or tuna mm, mahi oh, either or yeah both leaving uh, mangrove key see you can see the water is very high now so the island almost disappears and when the water goes down which is around uh, 70 centimeters it just gets bigger the catamaran down there who came during the night otherwise you see not much there's a couple of shallows with some trees there's a big squall some rain oh there's another boat down there so a lot of boats today otherwise there's nothing around and it's very shallow this is like two to three meters deep and 20 miles this direction we're gonna get to our destination we have Starlink, we have internet everywhere, you see? And you're out here and you can just look at the YouTube and figure out how to tie a knot. <laughs> Isn't this cool? <laughs> I think that's like, it's gonna change how we sail. Not sure on the good or bad, but we're out here in the middle of nowhere and I'm gonna show you our Starlink. So all you need is to have this antenna and you have internet via satellite. And, I've, and it's unlimited, it's super fast, you can watch YouTube, anything. And I'm not sure how antenna, how much it costs, but then I think it's around $200 per month to have internet, you know, like everywhere, all the time. It's pretty amazing. I have a special recipe from my grandmother. So you put two deciliters of milk per banana, throw it in a blender you can put a little bit of rum just a little bit now this blender in our ninja is brand new so i'm gonna wash it so i put some water and soap and i guess you press power and you press low press high this is how i wash And it's washed. So now I'm gonna add milk, banana, so two deciliters per banana. The funny thing is, you see, it has 100% real milk. Like, of course, you buy milk. What? Is it gonna be fake milk? Like, seriously, like 100% real milk? What is that? We have bananas, milk. We put a little bit of vanilla extra aroma. Uh, power. This stuff, it's really, really good. 
we can see some clouds there it definitely is rain but we can use some rain just to wash the boat see there's no thunder many times around these areas you just have these showers actually looks super nice and you can see it on the radar so the radar i think the number one usability of the radar is recognizing squalls you're crossing an ocean you can see the squalls at night when they're gonna hit you so you can do something else this is AIS because uh, he's warning us there's a boat and it's the catamaran down there it's a Bali catamaran and seems like we're just going to the same place together which is nice and company so you can see there's rain and you can just track it and you can figure out what direction it goes or just look at it but at night you won't be able to see so at night this is the most useful thing uh, ever we have 3.6 meter depth let's see the chart where are we where are we going we're doing seven knots see this is the other catamaran let's zoom out okay let's zoom out more so florida this is a grand bahama abacos let's zoom in so we left mangrove key we go here this is 20 miles and we have around seven miles to go so one hour and we're gonna be here exploring these islands a very cool thing on the radar is like we can track this as an object if you had a very small uh, squall it's easier to track now we have a big system but anyway you see you just press on whatever you want to track acquire target and now you see he made this uh, and he's trying to track it just using uh, some brain so now he's kind of acquired a tiger and this uh, this vector is showing where it's going so it's very easy you see this is us we're going here but the system or whatever the point we choose is going here which means uh, we're probably gonna pass it now when the small there's a small squall you would just have you know a big red thing um, and it's very easy to track it now he seems like a little bit lost we can acquire a new target you see you make new acquire target he just needs some time so this is target number one this is target number two and he needs a little bit to get the vector of movement and it's kind of getting smaller you can see it's like it just might dissolve and also the amount of the reflection you get is the amount of how bad the system is okay now we have the vector again saying it's moving in this direction that's not tracking the best but well you get the idea what this used for we just got some wind and this wind is probably from this system but anyway you see we have uh, now nine knots of apparent wind speed from 74 degrees which is good so we're just gonna be a lazy sailor so we're just gonna open the genoa see that's the thing with these catamarans if it's gonna be just a short wind it takes a while you know to open all this stuff so i think the future is furling although not such a good shape but i think furling is the future so now we're just going to open the Genoa and it's going to help a little bit, you know, we're going to pick up some speed, use less fuel and it's so easy to open and so easy to furl. So the cool thing is now this button, so now we're pressing this button and this is the electric control and then that button which is pulling out the sail and let's see what this electric winch is doing. You see, it's kind of, it's making annoying sound, listen to this. It's kind of annoying sound but you know it's not loud so you see the speed it's relatively slow but i mean that's fine so now the sail is gonna open and i kind of you know what i like this electric i like it more and more i just hope we won't have any trouble so the time will show and the good thing is you see you just open this guy uh, and then you can put the winch in Oh, it's closed well, I won't touch it. But anyway, you put a handle and you can then manually furl it if you have a trouble. Uh, expensive piece of equipment, but I like it. I like it. That's now, we picked up some speed now using burning much less fuel. And now, you see, as doing this, it's very easy. I just, I like this button, it's good. I like the electric winch, but just the position, oh, we have to close it so nobody accidentally steps on. I don't like this. It's just like you see you're like trying to find and delay and you're watching down you should be watching what you're doing all the time but then you're watching where to press and it's where the ropes are i just don't like it i really like how the some other branded boats have they have the harken winch i mean these winches are okay but i just love uh, harken winches not all good stuff from harken 
but the winches are good and you have buttons here and it's two speed and I think uh, that's the way to go buttons here and two speed winches it does the job see it does the job but I just prefer it yeah it would be really nice to have furling mane now yeah I know you know they're smaller they don't have such a good shape I know everything what you're thinking it doesn't look so good but right now I would love to have a furling mane we will just open it easy to close because now I have to climb open here this rope it's just kind of you know a hassle if you if you're not going for you know just a short sail because our island is down there and it will just you know help us with the speed with everything but then again just my opinion this is so good we can now set so you see by moving this forward or backwards you're adjusting this angle of the pull see of the sail and then you can set all the telltales to be happy see right now this one is not very happy so maybe i can just step on see and now you see the telltale on the top he's happy if i step off he is not very happy but i do this and i make a difference on the top you see i close the top now everything is more happy we cannot this do this with a self tacking which just sucks and i'm so happy to have this now there's one thing uh, you can only move it by hand and when there's no pressure but you could have the one with the lines so you could use it whenever you want so there's a line the line would go there as like racing boats and you can adjust it you know whenever you want because now if you want to adjust either furl sail or tack and use that one and move this one uh, so you have to think in advance but as long as this is here and we don't have a self tacking i'm just happy i like this sail i like this genoa because it's bigger you know it's longer than those short self tacking ones i like it so this chair it's one of the most comfortable chairs in like this uh, sport top versions and it's big enough for two and a half men but then again you see we don't like squeezing that close i mean we like each other but not that much so we're just thinking how to make this better and i just found a solution you see if uh, like on the long passages if you could just you know pull out more chair so it would like both backrest and this and just pull it here and then you could have uh, you know three and a half men sitting or maybe four ladies or just the two of us would be way more comfortable you know not touching each other in the waves when you're banging each other lay out one person yeah and you can just open and close it you know i think it would be a good uh, a good thing because when you have a waves, you know, and everybody's a little bit like this, you know, it's just, it's fine, too, but too cozy. it's, yeah, too cozy. <laughs> oh, we have the rain. We have a little bit of rain. You see, I like a lot of rain or no rain, because a lot of rain cleans the boat, a little rain just makes it wet. And now we are four miles out of our anchorage, a great sail K. So we're going to drop anchor here and explore. And the island is just in front of us, we can actually see it quite well. Safely anchored on a great sail K, so we're here. And uh, seems like very nice place here, we've seen that beach, uh, seems very nice here. Uh, so this is how it looks. And there's no sun, so fortunately no colors. Uh, so not much there, you see this is just looks like kind of a, a boring shore. Not much to see. So our fellow friend is there so this area all seems like kind of boring but there's this nice sand bank on the beach on the other side where we're gonna go now with our dinghy dinghy is ready for a ride and this platform you know i was always against the platforms especially the hydraulic ones now this has electric winches it still has uh, probably his own you know troubles and stuff you know if you want to go safe you just go with that good old system nothing can go wrong but like the usability of this is really really good you see so easy now to go into the dinghy you can put it lower you can swim from it you can put chairs and when it's up you just have more areas like a terrace so usability is really really good now there's just more stuff to go wrong uh, so if you want to be safe go with that system or give it a try so far uh, we're kind of happy the only downside we'll see later when we get big waves you know how do you get dinghy up when there's a lot of waves you see this is going up and down just might crash in a boat but still we have to try first maybe it works well Perfect, 
Oh, it's a nice beach and it's clean. Unfortunately, there's clouds, otherwise this would be a paradise. But just looking at this beach, it is, uh, it's clean. You see, the natural beaches are many times just full of plastic. Now, this grass, okay. Okay, there's one bottle. But I would call this a relatively uh, clean place. Okay, there's another bottle. Down there, there's something, but uh, I mean, it's not bad at all. And nobody cleans this. It's pretty nice here. Oh, I wish we had the sun. The colors would pop up. It would be great just to bring your hobby cat, pull it up here, camp, and sail these Bahamas waters. Maybe one day. So you see, this is like grass and no grass because this is where the tide comes to and then takes everything away. And this is what the waves wash up. So that's why you have a clean side and dirty side. Something definitely used to be here. Looks like something. It's like... Uh, I have no idea. See, it's like concrete. Could be a house, but it's just kind of... Not sure what's that for. There's a hole. Oh, and there's more. See, this is kind of interesting. I have no clue what was this used for. More stuff here. It looks like a cistern. It's like... Put something in here. Almost like a water collector or a fuel tank. Yeah, this was a kind of a platform. Interesting. Some rocks on this side. Yeah, it just goes. It's rock. It's not a coral. This is a rock. It's rocky, and then that side has no rocks. Pure sand. You got an ostrich. Yeah. The neck got cut off. So this looks like an ostrich neck. <laughs> See, there's a neck, there's mouth, there's an eye. <laughs> but don't worry, it's not. It's just a. Oh no, it is. <laughs> no, it's just a wood. <laughs> just a wood, but does look like. We have no chain counter, so we have to mark the chain, you know, the length of the chain somehow. So we're gonna use these zippers and we can write down what color it is, so every five meters. And that's gonna do it because in Bahamas you do want to know you know how much chain you dropped It's very important. You know, I mean everywhere and we're gonna use this sophisticated equipment to do so uh, So see I'm gonna Use this to measure the chain and Also, we're gonna measure the depth under the sonar because what you want to know is how deep it is under the, the sonar So I'm gonna drop it to the bottom bring it to the boat and then we're gonna know exactly how much our, uh, you see, uh, the depth on the Raymarine is off. And that's how we can figure out exactly when we're gonna hit the ground. Now uh, just to, you know, confirm what he's reading. Yeah, this is gonna be another cooking video. Look at this. <laughs> I'm gonna make uh, is, this, is this smell gonna attract sharks now as I'm going in the water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't wash any dishes with these steaks because there's gonna be Loads of sharks coming. I better go quickly. Ah, this is the scuba. So we're gonna test this. We have a lot of equipment on this boat. This is the nicest morning so far and there's one boat coming and one just passed. This one came during the night, that's our fellow guy who came with us. Loads of moisture on the boat and this is the first, um, kind of say, nice day we're having. It's gonna be sun and sun only. Oh, one boat just left, that was a month sailing boat. And this boat came yesterday, so suddenly it just feels like it's getting busy. Today, not much winds. We're gonna go uh, north, I'm gonna show you, actually east. 
I'm gonna show you on the map and it's gonna be a great day. Here uh, you can see our track, you see this purple thing, this is our track. So we're now getting towards uh, Abacus. And so let's zoom in, so from this great sail K, we're gonna go here to this one. Uh, where is it? Let's find, we're gonna skip this guys. And we're gonna go to this one, Marine K. It seems like it's a very nice place, nice beach. Uh, there's uh, one um, hotel which is not working anymore and very good swimming on the reefs. And then from here, we're gonna keep going towards Penascula Case. And we're gonna anchor here. A uh, great place to uh, like to discover. And we have around 30 nautical miles. Not much wind today, very light winds from here. So just engine here and here all together. It's gonna be 30 nautical miles, uh, have a stop here, stop here. And then officially we are like in uh, Abacus Islands. Having this machine for washing clothes, and it's just great. Like this is one of the best things you can have on a boat. For a few seconds. And he's gonna do all the job for you. And then you hang your clothes between the mast and the shrouds and they're gonna be dry in no time and it looks good.